in a cosmic showdown of loyalty and deception, Lucifer wasn't just trying to overthrow God. He was willing to bribe and manipulate heaven's strongest angel to do it. When Lucifer and his rebel angels plotted their rise against the Almighty, there was one angel they all knew could stand in their way, Michael. But this wasn't just any angel. Michael was loyal, incorruptible, and known as heaven's fiercest warrior. So, what did Lucifer do? He devised a plan to tempt Michael with power, glory, and even a throne of his own, hoping to shake his loyalty to God Almighty. But Michael saw right through his schemes. As Lucifer's tricks escalated, even resorting to trickery with Gabriel, the stakes couldn't be higher. What if Michael had accepted the offer? What lengths did Lucifer go to? We will soon find out in this video. Now this story started in one of the early days of creation, when all the rebel angels gathered for a meeting on how to overthrow the Almighty God and take sovereignty from Him. They considered the possible opposition they might encounter in executing their plans, with Michael at the top of the list. Beelzebub, who had earlier worked with Michael before defecting to Lucifer's camp, told the committee that Michael was an incorruptible angel, and inviting him to join the coup against God would be a bad idea. Allowing him to remain in opposition was also a very bad idea. Whatever they needed to do, they agreed, they should ensure Michael was not fighting against them. Even if he wasn't with them, he shouldn't be against them either. In fact, if possible, he should be taken out of the way before the day of the attack. They considered many other ideas to see if they could take out Michael before attacking God, but were unable to come up with a concrete plan. You see, Angel Michael is one of the world's most renowned angels. He is believed to be a top angel, highly regarded by God Almighty. All the books and literature references concerning him in the world describe him as a virtuous being. He is known to be down-to-earth and reliable. As the chief guardian angel of other angels and humans alike, he stands firmly against anything that would harm those under him, always ready to take a stand on behalf of those he cares about. There are records of many times when he put his neck on the line for others. A few examples from the Bible include the time when the Prince of Persia withstood Angel Gabriel, his colleague, for 21 days when he was sent to deliver a message from God to Daniel, who was praying for the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Another instance mentions Michael as the angel who confronted Satan when he came for Moses' soul after God had taken him on the mountain. And of course, it was Michael who led the fight that cast Lucifer down from heaven after his attempted overthrow of God. Now, back to the story of Michael and Lucifer. Seeing that Michael would be a challenge, the rebel angels decided to try bribing him. Lucifer told Michael that he had a proposition for him. God had given him authority over the kingdoms of the universe and the earth, and he was ready to give Michael a share of this authority if he agreed to do one thing for him help him set up another throne for God, one that would look similar to the throne of God. Lucifer was trying to deceive him into creating a divine authority for himself and to distract Michael from guarding God's throne and ensuring there were no intruders in God's kingdom. Michael refused, telling Lucifer that there is only one God that all living beings must worship, and therefore only one throne in heaven that is the seat of the Almighty. Setting up another throne would be an attempt to usurp God's authority and Michael would not be a party to such evil. Lucifer then tried a second request, asking Michael to help him set up another throne on earth. Again, Michael refused, reminding him that there is only one God and only one throne in heaven and on earth. God is also the God of earth. He created earth as a place for humans to worship and revere him alone. Another throne for God on earth was impossible, for as God rules all the heavens, he also rules all the earth. Then Lucifer opened the universe before Michael and showed him all the kingdoms and the glory of the earth under his control, promising to give all of it to Michael if he would help set up another throne in the universe. This time, the throne wouldn't be in heaven or on earth. It would be in between the heavens and earth, so as not to challenge God directly. But Michael, seeing through Lucifer's cunning plans, replied that God rules over all the heavens, the earth, and the entire universe, including the sun, the moon, and the stars. They are all the work of his hands, and his glory shines through them all. When Lucifer saw that he could not persuade Michael to help set up another throne in the universe, he stopped trying to convince him to create another throne. 
He then decided to change his tactics, attempting to involve Michael in his rebellion through other means of deceit and bribery. Lucifer had another discussion with the angels in his camp, and it was suggested that the best way to get Michael out of the way was to set him up against the Almighty God. This, they thought, would cause God to strip Michael of his power and closeness to him, allowing Lucifer to take Michael's place an inch closer to dethroning God. The rebel angels suggested to Lucifer that they should frame Michael by reporting to God that he was teaching the wrong songs to the cherubs and seraphim. They would claim that the songs sung to God were not glorifying him. Instead, some of the songs they sang, day and night, undermined his glory and majesty. Lucifer's plan was to implicate Michael as a usurper of God's glory, alleging that Michael told the cherubs to sing, Who is like unto thee, O God, and there is none like you, thereby subtly questioning God's authority over all the universe. However, when Lucifer's accusations against Michael were brought before God, they were rejected as baseless. Instead, God declared Michael the most trustworthy angel in heaven, standing firmly by him against those who had accused him. This infuriated Lucifer and the other rebel angels, and they were put to shame for their baseless accusations. Thus, Lucifer's second plan against Michael ended in failure, as it was rejected by God himself. Frustrated that he couldn't sway Michael through deceit, such as by asking him to make another throne in the heavens, the earth, or even the universe, Lucifer moved to another tactic. He decided to sow division in his own camp, aiming to deplete Michael's ranks. Lucifer knew that Michael's followers were twice as numerous and far stronger and more powerful than his own. For Lucifer to succeed in the civil war he planned for heaven, he would need to grow his ranks to surpass Michael's. His challenge, however, was that the angels loyal to Michael would not defect, and he couldn't create more angels from another source. Michael, on the other hand, had a team of mighty leaders from the Archangel's clan, including Gabriel, Raphael, and Ariel. These loyal angels, the first tier created by God, were unwavering in their support of God's glory in heaven and on earth. As a final attempt, Lucifer sent Beelzebub to deceive Gabriel, who had once been his friend when he served under Michael, hoping to turn him against Michael. Beelzebub told Gabriel that Michael was making him a slave in heaven, that he was the angel God always sent on errands, reducing him to a mere messenger while Michael enjoyed his position. Gabriel rebuked him, saying, Be gone from here, Lucifer. I am of the order of the archangels of God, and I am ready to go anywhere and do anything God wants me to do. The rest of the story is in another video. Thank you for your support.